Today for Mousetrap Monday, we're going to look at this antique, humane, multi-catch mousetrap. You can catch a lot of mice in one night with this trap. They end up in this little cage over here. A really effective design. How much does this look like a workhouse? The resemblance is remarkable. And let us remember what a mousetrap is. A mousetrap is a trap for the catching and usually the killing of mice. Another definition is to induce someone to do something by means of a trick. Trickery. Deception. Lies. A workhouse is defined as a public institution in which the destitute of a parish receive board and lodging in return for work. Definition linked to a prison in which offenders are expected to work. And finally, an asylum, an institute for the care of people who are mentally ill. Remembering that people taken into asylums usually don't come back out. Just like we saw in the Holocaust, People deceive. Workhouse is told to be one thing, and once inside, locked behind the doors, completely something else. As we will see with a mousetrap, once entering a workhouse, or an asylum, or hospital, it's rare they ever get out. It's called the Delusion, and it was one of the most advertised mousetraps of the 19th and early 20th centuries. Hang on a minute, and it's called the Delusion. Whether I've stated it in videos or not before, I hugely link asylums, workhouses, hospitals of the past, not only to the ridding of memory of the past and the peoples of the past, but programming of the future to create delusions and illusions within people. Delusion defined as fixed false conviction in something that is not real or shared by other people, leading towards that the mouses within these box, like humans within the workhouses, asylums and hospitals, would be different to the people on the outside. It was invented by John Morris in 1876. The same time period that links to everything else, spontaneously everything just arriving in the 1800s or the 1700s yet again. What we have is multi-chambers in here. This little door flips up and you can see a holding chamber and then where they get caught. If we were to look at the designs of say a workhouse or an asylum, it would be the same scenario, the entrance would be the gate, and these gates were huge in proportion and often guarded, and once that door was shut, there was no getting back out. The place they proceeded to would have been the entrance, ultimately the welcoming area, and then from there, they would be put into the chambers or the wings or the wards, which usually are on the sides. And we see the same scenario with this mouse trap as the mouse is entered, the door closes behind them and they're essentially locked in it. As the victims would have entered the asylums, the workhouses, similar such thing. And if we take this to a deeper level or a higher level, either or, we could see the mouse trap as life itself, the entrance through, a welcoming of some sort before being trapped, with all its trickery and deceit involved. Me, maybe the silly mouse that goes into the hole to help the rest escape. Maybe we break the lid off that motherfucker. Maybe we all get killed together. The way this works is there's a trigger mechanism right here, a little teeter-totter with a door that opens and closes. When the mouse goes in, it steps in the back of that and closes. And when they go in the back chamber, they release their weight and it opens again. You have a little bait station here that's barred off so the mice can't eat all of it. But you can put a big chunk of cheese or some bait in there they come in there to get it, step on the trigger, and get clothes behind them. It wouldn't surprise me if these people were enticed some way into these places, either asylums or workhouses. And then once there again, the door shut upon them. You know, part of the delusion or illusion for me is the outside perspective. Because we look at these places and we look back at the records and they tell us about the admissions and about this and about that. But what is the truth? Again, that could just be the, the cover, the narrative. There's a little hole here that leads to the second back chamber room and a little door here that goes up and down. So the mice go in there through the little door, opens up and then comes through and they can't get back out. And they're stuck in here and another mouse is free to come on in. Essentially, when one patient has been registered, locked away, the room is open for more patients to be registered, brought in, locked away. The mouse trap filling up just like a ward or wing would. I want to test this mouse trap out. It's really cool and it's really simple design. Let's go test this out in the barn and see if we can catch some mice in this 141 year old style mouse trap. He proceeds and catches them, one by one, until the mousetrap is full. 
I went to go check our antique delusion mousetrap in the barn last night and it's clear this is a great design that's capable of catching a lot of mice. You can see the little tail in there. The biggest flaw is that the holding compartment is so small. I don't know how many mice we have in here, but they look like there's several crammed into the tight space. We know extremely poor conditions can be present in asylums, prisons and hospitals. But something tells me that this is why they made them quite big. When we see the sizes of these old workhouses of the old world, they are absolutely huge. They can take thousands and thousands of inmates. And essentially, it just wasn't one. They were set up in every town, every location, spread across. Just like how you might put mouse traps through a house. One in the living room, one in the kitchen, one here, one there. To catch as many as you can. Now unfortunately with these multi-catch humane traps, when the mice get in there and become stressed in a confined area, they begin to kill and eat each other. It's not a hunger thing, it's just a response to being trapped. So I don't know how many are still alive or if any of them are still alive except for one. So we'll flip this up, let them out and see how many mice we caught and how many are still alive. It's obvious that anything confined to a small space will potentially turn on each other, harming or killing one another. And we see this in prisons all the time, and it would be the same in asylums, and it would have been the same in workhouses. But when we look at the world again, when we go higher or we go deeper, we see it happening in our own world. The more the population increases, it seems to create more wars and conflict, and people turn on one another. The more that this happens with the draining of resources and the more that people have to share, the more vicious they turn to one another. The mouse trap is not only showing us our past history, but also showing us life, also showing us the realm which we're placed in. And you can imagine that when a few mouses are in the mouse trap, it's perfectly fine. But as that gets more crowded and crowded and crowded, they may turn on one another. There's at least one big one there, two big ones, we'll let those go. And then there's one that's been eaten, you can see down there. This one seems fine and we'll uh, send them on its way. There you go, try to bite me. There's another one hiding below that dead mouse, we'll let it climb out. I'll even pull that dead one out so we can uh, get the other one to come out. This other one in here doesn't want to come out so we'll kind of force it out with a stick. Thinks it's a good hiding spot down there. No, no, it's not. Run, run. Let's pull him on out and let him go on his way. So here's the one mouse that they chewed to pieces. You can see that he went right through the skull and ate the brain. So that happens with these mice. It's pretty disgusting, but it's something that they do. But overall, this trap worked great. Three mice in a night is not bad, especially for a trap that's 141 years old. What a great design and a cool trap. Yeah, so 141 years old and still catching mice. Just like all these prisons that we see, converted asylums and workhouses, still catching mice. And this world still bringing in souls, still catching mice. And this world, as savage as it is, you saw what happened to the mice as they ate out his brains. Be cautious, be aware, but do not forget compassion just because of the savagery. But keep your guard up as a warrior would. A warrior can still love and fight at the same time. Protect yourself people, love and light. 